that there is life after Formula One. <laughs> I think uh, the tremendous amount of charity work that we're involved with. Um, I think also that uh, we're a normal family with normal challenges and uh, there's some uh, quite riveting information in there never been spoken about before. So, um, so I'm told it's a great read. And uh, we've also managed um, to actually uh, put you in the cockpit of a Formula One car and give you the comparison of how it was back in my day to how it is today. And, and I think we've spent very special attention to try and do that. And of course, you'll be my judge. drivers don't realize how privileged they are. I mean, pretty much everything except for one or two items in this room have won their all podium positions in Formula One or other racing. Um, I think our life takes us throughout the world. We get very privileged to meet um, all sorts of manner of people through the world, whether it be royalty or um, incredible entrepreneurs. Um, we get to the most diverse places and um, you know, we, we tend to then think that's the norm, and of course it's not the norm. It's quite the other extreme. So uh, I'd say in one word that uh, when I look back, uh, I'd say that I'd just like to thank everybody um, that the privilege that's been afforded me to, to race and drive to all the teams and all the countries I've visited. But, but above all, for me, the biggest privilege is the racing fans throughout the world that I've related to. And uh, all the fans could see that when I got in a car, whether it was competitive or not, I always gave it my all.